My name is Krishnan Thurwingdam again. Let me introduce you to you. Like, I've been with Cisco for 15 years, past five years um, in endpoint analytics, and I'm the SME uh, subject matter expert for endpoint analytics. So the next 20, 25 minutes, and I'll walk you through um, the challenges of endpoint analytics and why we need uh, 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 something like uh, uh, endpoint analytics and give you a brief overview of uh, endpoint analytics, how AI comes into uh, play, and then uh, finally give you a whole picture as to uh, what we do with uh, endpoint analytics and how you can do policy enforcement. The, the security starts with visibility and it ends with uh, policy and uh, segmentation. And we will also talk about uh, some of the value. Okay, why is visibility important, right? Um, you know, with the explosion in the number of IoT devices in the market, and uh, uh, we have seen IoT devices everywhere, like pre-COVID times, and as you uh, uh, enter the building, you have seen surveillance cameras, and as you walk in, the door locks, the badge readers, and as you get into the building, right, like your iPhone connects to your Wi-Fi, um, and you walk with the elevator, the elevator, the building management system, the temperature controller, and as you go to the uh, conference room, the, the telepresence unit and the conferencing unit and uh, many more IoT devices around you. you. You might have observed that. So during COVID times, healthcare, healthcare has become so important, right? And we hear medical facilities being attacked by cyber criminals. Now, if you think about healthcare, Right, and what are the what are the machines connected to the patients? And you can think of infusion pumps, heart rate monitors, and if you think about patient diagnostics, X-rays, CT scans, ultrasound, and so many more. Right, we have also found that a large percentage of these imaging devices, the so-called X-rays and CT scans, and they have unsupported operating system. What it means is it's they are vulnerable. And then they also talk using unencrypted protocol. So the idea is that, like you know, we need to be able to protect these IoT devices. And only when you uh, make it visible and, and can profile it, and then you'll be able to protect it. So this is the expectation. We want the users and the devices be able to clearly uh, be identified say contractor, building management system, temperature device and surveillance device and employees and so on, so that you can apply policies and segmentation very nicely like that. But what happens a lot of times is that you will be able to classify or you will be able to identify uh, IT managed devices and unmanaged devices. However, uh, a good amount of uh, IoT devices and enterprise IoT devices or medical IoT devices remains unknown. And also, we we should be able to align ourselves with NIST cybersecurity framework, and that uh, speaks about attack continuum and how we can solve using attack continuum. Especially two uh, two important things, and one is identify, and the second one is protect. Right. You should be able to know what is there in your network so that you can apply the right level of access. Now, um, I'll give you the I'll give you the brief overview of endpoint uh, analytics. And endpoint analytics has two basic functionalities: the AI-driven analytics and the deep packet inspection. I'll not go uh, deeper into the deep packet inspection. I'll uh, cover more on the AI-driven analytics. So what does it give you, right? Like three things, high fidelity profiling, improved classification, better workflows. So um, think about deep packet inspection as a funnel that goes to uh, that goes to a box, which is the controller box, and that goes to the cloud. That uh, sends information over the cloud. So we have a lot of endpoint attributes that we gather using the deep packet inspection and from other sources such as ICE. Um, and all of this is aggregated in endpoint analytics and it does profiling. And by uh, aggregating all of these attributes, you can do a high fidelity profiling because we it gets more granular. You get more granular attributes from all of these sources. And we are also able to identify hundreds of uh, application protocols as well. Now, as you funnel in, Right, these endpoint attributes aggregated and the endpoint uh, endpoints gets profiled. Things that are not profiled are sent over to the ML cloud, 
Now, what happens in the ML cloud is that it intuitively groups the endpoint or clusters the endpoint based on common set of attributes, and that's what we call AI ML uh, uh, clustering. That helps you to reduce the number of unknowns in your uh, environment, in your customer's environment. Uh, and once it clusters, and admins can label them, and this label that is created in one customer can be shared with other uh, customer intuitively, and that is still under uh, development. But the idea is that we use crowdsourcing to share these labels. Now, we also closely uh, integrate with uh, ICE and ServiceNow, ICE for policy enforcement. ServiceNow is used as an asset management platform where device owners, clinicians, right? Like if you think about uh, healthcare, they will register their, their, their device in uh, ServiceNow and uh, um, endpoint analytics can gather the asset information and then they can, you can create uh, profiles. So all of these attributes are funneled into the cloud. I got a question. Uh -huh. So you were talking about device profiling and, and label classification. Yes. Um, and you also talked about during the registration. So uh -huh. if I were to do a packet inspection and traffic inspection, then it comes during the runtime after the device is in the network. But then also you, you talked about during the registration, you are able to classify. How are you able to identify a device before the traffic starts coming in? So, you know, let me explain uh, how it works. And uh, this is the slide that uh, that explains uh, how it works. And uh, uh, and hopefully like that, uh, that uh, clarifies your question. So what happens here is that like, you know, we have these data sources and we have DPI as one of the, the, the data source and ICE probes is one was, is another data source. And we also have some onboarding tools. And of course we have a CMDB connector that Peter talked about and that's the service now. Now what, what happens is, uh, all of these data is aggregated and endpoints are profiled and uh, things that, that are not profiled are funneled into the ML analytics part. Now to your question, Andy. Right, when, endpoints, <clears throat> when endpoints are connected to the network and they authenticate and the ports are open, once the ports are open and uh, the, the deep pack inspection uh, resides in CAT 9K switches, and it can all you cannot. We also support uh, non Cisco platforms as well. Now, the deep packet inspection looks at the layer seven packets as it comes in and it listens to these packets. And the first time, right, it profiles these things. And we have thousands of rules available in the endpoint uh, analytics that helps you uh, profile it. So the first uh, First set of classification is done at the switch level itself and at the uh, network device uh, level, is, uh, level itself based on simple OUI and things like that. More complex classifications are done at the uh, application level, right? So I have another slide that talks about it, right? So, <clears throat> so when we profile these endpoints and we actually label these endpoints based on device type, hardware model, manufacturer, operating system. An example is CT scanner, and, uh, and this is uh, hardware model Ultima, manufacturer Globex Carpen, and you can, you can see the rest. Right. Now, this is exactly what happens. Now, uh, using traditional profilers, what happens is uh, CT scan when it connects to the network and uh, it looks, it sends a certain attribute and uh, uh, the, the profiler will be able to profile this as a Microsoft Workstation. Now, using DPI, uh, what happens is we look at uh, the layer seven packets and we also look at some of the lower level packets as well, but mainly it's the application packet. We do analysis of the packet and uh, we talk using different protocols. We uh, analyze different protocols. For healthcare, especially, we analyze DICOM and HL7, and these are the two key protocols for uh, uh, healthcare we uh, look into, and we look at the packet analysis, and the DICOM will send these attributes, for example, GE, CT, 540. Based on this, Endpoint uh, analytics will uh, look at these uh, packets and it'll have system rules. 
and it will classify these endpoints as CD scanner, manufacturer, model, operating system. I'm a little confused. You know, how does this play out, especially when you talk about encrypted transmissions? Because you don't have insights, and how do you know that any one given device is necessarily um, concerning? Right. Or are you they, still at that that kind of more crude level of we're just trying to figure out that we have a device or not, and what type of device it is? We haven't gotten exactly. to that point yet. Exactly. There are there are two things there. I mean, one is uh, we when we look at the uh, application. So if it is uh, encrypted. Uh, we would be doing some fingerprinting based on a TLS, uh, a TLS uh, encryption, but we may not be able to get a lot of information. But if you think about these IoT devices sending uh, sending traffic using unencrypted protocols such as DICOM HL7, right? And when you when you look at these packets, and you can actually see ga gather a lot of asset information from there. And um, if you think about devices uh, uh, such as Apple TV, they use multicast. And uh, when you look at these multicast packets, and it'll show that, like it'll show a certain operating system. Um, and uh, we also collect uh, uh, information using discovery protocols such as CDP, LLDP, and all that. So there are a multiple mechanism that we use to gather information about those four labels, and then we label them based on system rules. Speaking about uh, uh, ML, uh, ML analytics, so we wanted to be able to uh, classify and profile endpoints nicely, but uh, practically speaking, there, there would be uh, uh, endpoints that are still unknown, right? So endpoint analytics is an aggregator and it sits on uh, the DNA uh, DNA center, which is in the which is the network management uh, uh, platform for automation assurance and policy. Now, uh, known uh, uh, known endpoints goes to the device data lake, and unknown uh, endpoints are sent to the ML cloud. Now, the ML cloud groups these endpoints based on the common set of attributes seen, and uh, it creates rules automatically. So once it creates rules, uh, it'll ask admins to uh, label them. And in this example, we have Bosch coffee machines. And actually, there was one customer who was who, who was looking to manage these uh, coffee machines uh, remotely. Uh, in fact, I uh, when I was reading through an article from 2019, uh, Starbucks, right? Um, they are using uh, they are using they are uh, big time uh, IoT people. And uh, they gather a lot of statistics from these coffee machines, and they remotely manage these coffee machines as well. In fact, they have around uh, uh, 12 different uh, instruments in, uh, within the Starbucks, and they wanted to keep it operational for around 16 hours. And uh, an interesting thing I uh, read was uh, they were able to download a recipe to the coffee machine itself, which they were not able to do before. So it is important for us to identify these uh, these devices as Bosch coffee machines or Starbucks coffee machines, whatever it is, right? So so that we can take advantage of uh, the technology. Once uh, admin uh, labels these uh, uh, endpoints, um, the new labels are learned by AI. Now, what do we do with these labels, right? Say for example, in customer A, uh, we were we, uh, customer A learns this as a Bosch coffee machine. This goes to the AI cloud, and AI learns from that. And in customer B, this is a different location. If the ML sees a very similar cluster, it would recommend these as Bosch coffee machines. So at this point of time, an admin can actually accept this label or reject it. Even in the previous slide, when I showed right. The clusters, right? When we show these clusters in uh, in the endpoint analytics, uh, admins are allowed to either accept it or reject it. You know, this is to uh, improve the efficacy of ML and to reduce the false positives as well. And we do the aggregation based on that. The how part of it, how part of all of this, and how it happens, and what exactly we use on the uh, ML side. Uh, JP would uh, uh, explain that much, much better, and he has nice slides and algorithms to, to explain it. Okay, uh, here is a brief demo about uh, what 
we spoke so far. So uh, this is Cisco AI uh, endpoint analytics, and I'm opening up a DNA center. And uh, this is in uh, in my lab, uh, lab uh, lab environment and DNA center, as I said. And uh, this is the controller. This is the network management pl platform and the <coughs> controller that does automation, assurance, policy, and uh, and, uh, and many other uh, applications, and that includes uh, uh, Cisco AI endpoint analytics as well. Now, um, when you open up the Cisco AI endpoint analytics, and you will see the total number of uh, endpoints to the left, and you will see the AI pr pr proposals to the right. Uh, it's a very clean uh, uh, user interface, and you will see the fully profiled endpoints and endpoints that are missing profiles. And even if you miss a single label, it will be categorized as missing profiles <laughs> and then endpoints that are unknown. Now to the right, you will see AI proposals and we see that there are 10 new rules. Now um, on the top, you will see the menus, uh, the endpoint inventory, profiling rules, hierarchy. Here is a look at the missing profile labels. Endpoint inventory is the main area where a lot of admins would spend time on because it, it gives you a list of uh, uh, endpoints in, that are in the network active as well as uh, inactive. Now let's take a look at a quick uh, system, which is a full body CT scan. I talked about DICOM and these are the attributes. Um, you're using DNA Center, but as AI endpoint analytics is a SaaS solution, can I leverage other tooling to, to subscribe to that SaaS service? Or do I really need to have DNA right. Center? Right, good. Great, 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 good question. So this is right now an on-prem solution. AI Endpoint is an application that runs on DNA Center. ML, is, uh, this information is sent over to the ML cloud, and that's where all the clustering, the crowdsourcing, uh, and uh, other things uh, happen. So you need connectivity to the cloud, and what JP was mentioning earlier is that Right? Like we anonymize the data here and we send it over to the cloud. We actually do multiple levels of uh, uh, encryption. We have knobs and that you can turn off and turn on and it's an opt-in uh, for the cloud. You just have to, uh, admins have to physically go and uh, turn it on for the cloud. And that's what he was, he was saying. This seems like just a sophisticated or maybe not super sophisticated discovery tool able to discover the devices on your network and maybe pop them into your CMDB or, or doing something like that. Where does, where does the AI and intelligence go from here? Because that, this, you know, from a customer standpoint, I'm looking at this and going, okay, that could be interesting, but it's not something that I'm going to necessarily invest a lot of time and money into. Right. Um, where, do, where do you go from here? It comes in the next half of the demo. So if you, okay. yeah, so it, it's coming, it's coming. Okay. So, so you just have to wait for a few more seconds and then you'll see uh, how AI p p plays a role here. You know, the, this, is the, 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 this is the part where we show uh, uh, what we do with uh, the full body CT scan. And once, once we have these attributes and this is sent over to uh, the ICE and ICE is where the policy enforcement happen, right? And now, um, uh, this is sent using a specific attribute, and then this is sent over twice. Now, let's take a look at how AI comes into play here. Now, uh, say, for example, we connect a bunch of thermostats in your network, and uh, DPI doesn't work, and uh, you're not able to profile. And AI groups these uh, endpoints intuitively, and you can see that the OUI is the CDO thermostat, and there's a DHCP classifier, and uh, all these attributes. And uh, rules are created automatically for you. Now, what happens here, the next step, and this is a nice uh, wizard, and as you see in the bottom, uh, admins can click next. And admins are asked to create rule uh, with endpoint type, operating system, manufacturer. Now. Uh, for the manufacturer, we have all uh, ML already has seen this in several customer location. So it shows that like it is a suggested uh, label for manufacturer. Um, someplace earlier, you had indicated that uh, um, in high fidelity profiling, we're also using crowdsource labels. Yes. 
Can you explain that? Yes, this is what uh, the, this is uh, this is exactly where crowdsourcing comes into play, where we actually learn the labels from one customer, and then in the previous screen, and you saw that uh, I was actually uh, uh, it it shows that it was a suggested uh, uh, label. So let me go back, right? And uh, w what we do with this uh, endpoint. Uh, endpoint uh, attributes is that we send it over to ICE, and we actually create these uh, attributes and, and uh, labels in endpoint analytics and uh, send this over to ICE. And that's where the policies are created, and you can push the policies over to the uh, network. So the start would be uh, visibility on endpoint analytics, which is uh, in the DNA center, and the end goal is the segmentation and then that's where we push these policies over to the, the DNA center. Now, uh, there is one more thing. Uh, this is a big uh, differentiator between what we do versus others uh, could be, because we also look at uh, ML analytics. We also leverage ML analytics for ongoing validation. So what happens here is that like we use uh, uh, say, for example, a camera is connected to the network and camera sends the endpoint telemetry to endpoint analytics. Um, and uh, ML looks at the endpoint state or the endpoint behavior. So it constantly observes the endpoint uh, behavior from different customers and create models. And these models and classifiers are sent over to the uh, DNA center and that's where, that's how it uh, detects any deviation from the model. Now, um, say for example, a bad guy comes in and he, uh, he or she impersonates uh, uh, and uh, connects a laptop and impersonates that as a camera or an IP phone or a printer. Then um, based on the traffic, they can, uh, ML can flag that this doesn't uh, align itself to the existing model and we can use ICE to do the change of authorization. What it means is we can block the user. So this would be a good big uh, differentiator because this is what this is where ML comes handy because we it uh, uh, it looks at the endpoint behavior from different customers right creates models of uh, different uh, types of uh, uh, endpoints and pushes this to the, uh, the DNA C. Is that a uh, blocking of that uh, uh, attacker? So is it automatic or is there some person doing it manually? So uh, right now you can ask admins to do it manually, but going forward uh, this could be uh, automated as well. But right now we don't want the uh, the yeah, we we want admins to be, give. Uh, uh, we want admins to give permissions uh, for uh, blocking this uh, user. So right now it's a manual process where admin goes and it it see uh, they see that like it's a uh, it's it's a misbehaving endpoint and they click on and then something else uh, happens. So this could be automated as well. The flow entire flow can be automated as well.